We people from the forest could never stay in the city. We live in the bush, and we have everything we need here. Unfortunately, we are now witnessing the mass destruction of the forest. I may be like one tiny ant struggling to resist, but I do my part by talking about causes like this. While people everywhere are afraid of the end of the world, we indigenous people already know what that means. And we're here to work together to make sure it doesn't happen again. Manaus is an industrial city at the heart of the rainforest in the state of Amazonas a place where untouched nature meets urban life. Emerson Ponches previously studied biology and is a trans artist. In performances captured through photographs, Emerson transforms into Uira Sodoma. Emerson paints and decorates their body with organic materials, becoming a hybrid natural being. The artist designs and creates the costumes using plants from the garden or local surroundings. This is from the Barichi palm. It's a water plant. When I touch it, it reminds me of water, of animals. I try the costume out here on the model. So I can kind of see myself from the outside. Emerson was born in the village of Monjuí dos Campos in the Amazon region of Pará and grew up seeing the diversity of nature, later researching it scientifically. Emerson connects all these experiences through art, academic with spiritual knowledge, environmental activism with questions about gender. Uira is in a constant state of reinvention. Aouira has many faces. Every photo, every face tells a story. And there are countless stories to tell. Here, Aouira is telling stories about the Rio Negro. Stories about rights and the meaning of mystery, diversity, secrets, and about the human urge to explore and discover everything, which can lead to exploitation and, in the end, destruction. As Uira, Emerson can return to their roots, directing the Western European explorer's gaze to the view of indigenous peoples. As a trans person with both European and indigenous roots, Emerson mediates between different worlds. My work condemns these violations of life, not just the destruction of the environment, but also human social violations. I create a direct parallel between these worlds. Some 8,000 kilometers away, in Africa, in southwestern Cameroon, near the coastal town of Kribi, people are busy building a better future. The rainforest here is part of the Congo Basin, the world's second largest area of tropical rainforest after the Amazon. At the edge of the rainforest, Warka Village takes shape. It's named after a native African tree that's a gathering place for the local community. Here, people from the region are to live in harmony with nature, with the help of traditional materials and technology, old and new. Standing in the heart of Warka village is not a tree, but a tower, one that can collect and filter up to 25,000 liters of rainwater and condensation. 
In my country, Cameroon, water is an extremely important and rare commodity. We travel for miles to get clean drinking water. We want to give vulnerable communities like the Bagyeli, as well as all the others who need it, access to drinking water. A Bagyeli family has set up house right next to the construction site. They were displaced from their home in the rainforest and could be among the people who move into Warka village once it's finished. Eight to ten families from various communities could live here together in the future. We're happy the project is coming together. That's why we've settled here. But they also want to better their children's future. As in many other regions of the country, the children can't go to school because they have to help ensure their family's basic needs, like fetching water for daily use. They often walk for many hours and many kilometers through the forest. The long distances are one factor. Another is health and hygiene. The destruction of the forest and the expansion of cities have ruined the Bagyali's home and their access to clean water. We all do our business in the river. The water isn't really drinkable. It's where we use the toilet, where we do our laundry, everything. We drink there too. From the same river? Yes. Warka village aims to make lasting improvements to the living conditions of the people in this region. Construction began two years ago. Italian architect Arturo Vittori is in charge of the project. He previously worked on designing settlements for space research projects, so he's no stranger to dealing with tricky environmental conditions. Here in Africa, in Cameroon, as an architect, I have more chance to work with you know, natural materials. So being a less industrialized country, we are kind of obliged to go and you know, look for alternative technology, which are alternative for us, but for them are the traditional one. So here people that still live in mud house, house made out of bamboo, wood, earth. Traditionally, rainforest huts have roofs made of palm leaves, and that was the inspiration for Warka village. Here, the leaves of raffia palms are woven into panels and layered atop a wooden structure. In such a climate, the roof is everything for, for a building because it protects against the rain, when it rains very, very strong, it protects against the, the sun. For the rest, in this climate, you don't need walls, you don't need partition. The homes are designed for families of up to 10 people. There's space for a fire pit in the center of the room. The rising smoke should protect the thatched roof from moisture and keep insects away. This house in the rainforest aims to emulate the traditional lifestyle of the Bagyeli, who've lived here for as long as anyone can remember. Though unfortunately, they no longer live in harmony with their natural environment. It's been deforested, and the things they need to survive have been destroyed. That drives them out of the forest and into the city. Every year, an estimated 4 million hectares of rainforest are cleared on the African continent. This destruction has devastating consequences for everyone, but especially for indigenous peoples all over the world. Back in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, the country's largest city with some 12 million residents, it's the cultural and economic center of the country. This is where activist and actress Kai Sara lives today. She was born and raised in another world, in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. Standing here, you can get a sense of how lonely my struggle is, of how small my resistance is in relation to the power this place represents. 
de uma certa forma representa aqui dentro desse lugar, né? In the midst of all these towering buildings, Porque there is probably not a single indigenous person. Assim, não deve ter nenhum indígena, né? The Avenida Paulista is the city's most famous street, a seat of power, home to the big banks and insurance companies. It's also where Caixara protested against the enforcement of a bill which would allow Brazilian authorities to evict indigenous peoples from protected land. This struggle is really about encountering everyone. I'm meeting people from all over Brazil, and I'm trying to raise awareness. And I'm really fighting against an ignorant nation because some Brazilians really are ignorant. Caixara explores indigenous themes through her work. She acted in this Brazilian-German co-production screened at the Berlin International Film Festival in 2016. The film is about wandering between two worlds, the struggle for survival and the disappearance of a culture. Caixara's family comes from the Amazon in northern Brazil, near the Colombian border. Her mother is Tariana, her father is Tucano. Her grandparents also acted in films, as did her parents. They still sometimes perform together and are very close. She is continuing this work. She continues to tell stories. I taught my children everything. Her father and grandfather too so that they know and can preserve our culture, language, and customs. Caixara uses her body as a political instrument in her performances. I'm only now understanding how great my responsibility is. I'm 25 years old. I'm starting to get it. The Amazon is burning. Greed and profiteering are destroying one of the world's most important ecosystems. The planet's green lung is now emitting more carbon dioxide than it can absorb, and thus it's self-contributing to global warming. We're experiencing a global catastrophe. And the ones who can teach the world to live in a more sustainable way are the indigenous peoples. But how? Slash and burn agriculture is destroying lives and cultures, like those of the Bagheli in southwestern Cameroon. The forest has been privatized, the forestation is going on, and the pygmies that have been living here for millennium, now they are chased off of the forest and now they are marginalized. So this is what is uh, happening every day under our eyes and it's also our responsibilities, you know, as, as a Western world for what is happening. Warka village is intended to create new living spaces and train local people, for instance, as gardeners or skilled tradespeople. Residents should be able to live in harmony with nature and be self-sufficient. It's a model project for sustainable architecture, but also a social experiment. We must educate each person. Some come here with prior knowledge, but the majority of the workers and participants in this project have no experience. So our project's not just about building homes, planting flowers or providing a water supply. It's about training young people, so they can learn a profession and be independent in the future. It's a win-win situation for all, so the project's leaders hope people can coexist and treat one another with respect. But interactions between different cultures don't always go smoothly, and construction is often delayed due to a lack of materials. Still, the workers are learning and reviving traditional trades. It's definitely something good. But the Warka Village project isn't solely for the Bagheli. It's designed for other groups, too. 
The idea is to create a living space with a good hygiene concept. That's why we're building water towers to provide drinking water. Anyone who moves here must ensure the place remains clean. A utopia on the outskirts of the rainforest. How promising is the project for the indigenous peoples here? And can everyone learn to get along? We have to learn how to approach one another, how to communicate. We have a different way of life. We must try to understand how the other lives, talks and adapts. The same goes the other way around, too. Barbara cautiously reaches out to the Bagheli, who have little contact to other social groups. There's a great divide between the cultures of the industrialized world and the indigenous peoples of the rainforest. If they want us all to live here together, then they must also accept how we live. In two years, the village should be ready for people to move in. Will the conflicts be resolved by then? The children have already made the place their own. And ultimately, that's who the project's visionaries have in mind. The Bagheli's knowledge about living in harmony with nature is being lost. Warka Village is an attempt to preserve this knowledge for the benefit of people everywhere. I came to Africa with the envy to help, you know, with the masculine knowledge, how to construct sustainable infrastructure architecture like the Warka Village using local resources and local materials. With, with this experience, actually very precious, that they've been acquiring, you know, working here, I will bring it back to Europe because in our world, also there is a need for improvement and a new vision for the future that can be supported, but this know-how acquired here. But with its unique natural resources, the rainforest continues to arouse the greed of powerful people. The economic exploitation of the Amazon began centuries ago, with the colonization, eviction, and genocide of indigenous peoples. It seems the current Brazilian government has not learned from the mistakes of the past. On the contrary, more rainforest is being destroyed now than it had been in the last 10 years to the benefit of mining projects, agriculture, and the timber trade. Despite pressure from climate experts and laws stipulating the rainforest must be protected, the government is intensifying its campaign to evict indigenous peoples from their rightful land so that even more rainforest can be cleared. For us, it's always been about living in harmony with nature. If you take something away, you have to give something back. The idea was to live well together. And this is no longer the case. People are just taking. The preservation of the rainforest is essential. That's what indigenous peoples, climate scientists, human rights activists and artists are fighting for, including Swiss director Milo Rao. It's practically one of the last regions that has not been completely sucked into the system and where there is still a struggle going on that runs very deep to the roots of our past and also to our future. Because if the Amazon dies, then so does the planet. Milo Rao set his interpretation of the Greek tragedy Antigone in the Amazon. It's about the struggle between divine law and human justice, about the tyrant Creon who wants to preserve his power at any cost, and of Antigone who resists him. An allegory for the cultural war in Brazil, between the government and those fighting for their land and their survival. This is a political action. It's not only an international production, it's a real political collaboration. 
Rehearsals for Antigone in the Amazon bring together indigenous actors like Kai Sara and members of the Landless Workers Movement, Brazil's largest resistance group where millions of supporters fight peacefully, yet radically, for land reform. The Brazilian-European co-production is an act of resistance, using art to envision a better future. We don't have the answers as Europeans. We need other voices, somebody who warns us about what is going to happen, who gives us reasons, who essentially explains our own perversion and tells us, for example, that we are the cause of the disaster and not the sad victims of climate change. Matar menos, roubar menos. Mas como vocês podem acreditar que após mais de 500 anos de invasão, após milhares de anos de subjugação do mundo, pode vir um pensamento até vocês de que não trará mais destruição? Esta loucura deve acabar. Kaisara plays the lead role of Antigone. She's a woman who goes fearlessly to her death, spurred on by her faith in the divine and her convictions. I had no idea who Antigone was. I hadn't thought about it before, but then I realized that we indigenous people have a lot in common with this Antigone. <laughs> I like being an actress. I like working in this artistic medium because I know that my body is political and I know how important it is to work in this field. With her body and performances, she creates images that are unforgettable. In terms of the climate, I think that we're so desperate because we're very dependent on other people doing something. In this performance, Asphyxia, Kaisara constructs a metaphor on the suffocating greed of people who cut down the rainforest. A salvação, ao meu ver, I think the solution is swapping in politicians who will actually do something for the environment. That's the best way for us to save ourselves. For the Amazon rainforest to survive, indigenous voices must be heard, including those in the city. Back to the rainforest metropolis of Manaus, Emerson Ponches was five years old when their family moved to the city. They enjoyed the advantages of urban life, but always sought contact with nature and indigenous ancestors. I belong to the indigenous peoples whose history has been erased and who live in or near the city, displaced from their culture and community. It's important that the world and Brazil itself remembers that there are many different contexts of what it means to be an indigenous person in the 21st century. Emerson was lucky to find a teacher who shared in their enthusiasm for nature and motivated Emerson to study biology. Today, Emerson is paying it forward by encouraging young people, imparting knowledge through workshops, and working for cultural institutions and NGOs to save the Amazon rainforest. Four years ago, I finished my biology studies, but I didn't become a biologist solely through academia and observing living beings as objects. For Emerson, art is an attempt to portray how everything is interconnected. As Uira Sodoma, Emerson brings together academic knowledge, ancient spirituality, and experience as a non-binary transgender person. The state of being in between, as well as the unity of these existences. Many of the spiritual, 
political, social, ecological, and climate crises we are experiencing today have arisen because we listened solely to our own needs as humans. Uira wants us to reflect on the wholeness of the world. Merging with the environment, like here in the forest with a centuries-old tree. Art as a kind of ceremony that aims to bring us back to nature and a wake-up call. There are many forms of life in our world, life which deserves to be heard. If we want to preserve life, we must preserve all living things. There is no future without the Amazon.